My name is Lee Kornbrink. I work for the Endangered Wildlife Trust. Um, they have a large, low-felt large bird project um, that's based in the Kruger National Park. And I work on southern ground hornbills. And at the moment, I'm actually busy with my PhD looking at the habitat nesting and foraging of southern ground hornbills in Kruger. We have eight birds that we've put tracking devices on from the way down in the south as far as Shinguetsi in the north and it's been really really interesting we found that the territory sizes of the birds are in some cases a lot smaller than we thought they were um, around about on average 4,400 hectares whereas before we thought they were closer to 10,000 we have one bird that's got a 12,000 hectare um, home range though um, which has been quite interesting to see the differences between the birds. Now that we've known from the tracking birds that the territories are a lot smaller, we probably have, we could have a lot more birds in Kruger than we originally thought. So it's something that we feel really should be looked at, either while aerial censuses are being conducted, that hornbills are just recorded, or that we actually go and do an active project which looks at call-ups. So sitting at sunrise and playing calls and seeing how many birds respond where they are and making notes of that. And from that we'd be able to get some really good information on how many birds actually are in Kruger at the moment. So one of the key aspects of our research um, is looking at harvesting of second hatch chicks of southern ground hornbills. Uh, the birds lay two eggs, but they only ever raise the first hatch chick. So we have a part of a project that looks at taking out that second hatch chick and then taking it to captive rearing facilities. So we wanted to have a look and see, does the actual removing of the second chick, even though it will perish in nature, will it have any impact on the survival of the first chick? And luckily what we found is it has absolutely no significant impact whatsoever. Um, we've also been able to use camera traps at nests and video cameras and from this we've found some really interesting information. The one thing that's probably a highlight is that we've been able to see exactly when females lay the first and second egg and then we know that the incubation is about 39 days so we can then actively go to the nest at the time when that second chick will be just hatching from the egg and take it out then. The diet that they've generally been feeding them on in um, captivity is looking mainly like at pinky mice. So we wanted to see, well, we've got cameras at our nest, what exactly do the wild birds give to, to the chicks at the nest? And we found that the majority is insects and small lizards and geckos, no mammals whatsoever and no birds. So one of the things we do to monitor the chicks at nests is to put colour rings on them when they're about 60 to 70 days old. They fledged at about 86 days. Um, so they're really, really large by the time we put the rings on. Um, and then we ask citizens that come to the park tourists to please report any of the sightings that they see of the ring birds. Then we can get information on longevity, at what age birds will disperse from their natal groups and that kind of thing, as well as how long chicks survive in the wild. We're not sure um, at what age they reach sexual maturity for breeding, so there's a lot of answers that we can get from these data. Um, so the one thing that we would like is if anyone sees any um, ring birds specifically or actually any sightings of ground hornbills, especially if they can take photographs and possibly GPS coordinates, if they could send it to krugerbirds at gmail.com. They're such beautiful birds and they're just so, they're like gangsters almost. They always walk around in these gangs and they, they feed on, they're like, they are honorary raptors as we call them, but they have you could say birdinalities, like as opposed to personalities, because if you have a look at just some of my birds would attack the camera traps and others would totally leave them alone. And you get attached to your study species. <laughs>